writing to the Colossians in chapter 2 and verse 1 says, For I would, uh, you knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them I love this year, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love. <clears throat> and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. Sometimes it happens, even now, that reading the pure words of God in this King James Bible, knowing what Christ has done, the operation of God to save my soul and the soul of anyone else out there who believes the gospel of Christ, I am literally overwhelmed. It's too glorious and I feel like, you know, yeah, overwhelmed. That's the desire of God. Because Paul, remember, is the writer, is the apostle, okay? But these are the pure words of God. This is the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is God. So there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So the Holy Ghost is God. Is a, these words are God-breathed, inspired, and so that's the heart of God. It says that He wants their hearts, the hearts of the Colossians, then automatically of every member of the body of Christ, comforted, be knit together in love. This is the love of the Spirit. The love of the Spirit of God, the love of God who loved us so much that Christ gave his life, shed his precious blood to save sinners and to make of them children of God, adopting us by Jesus Christ to himself. So he desired that the hearts may be comforted, be knit together in love, and unto all riches, not a little bit. All riches of the full assurance of understanding. Once you know, once you have this understanding, you have a full assurance. It gives you tranquility, peace in your heart, because your life now is in Christ, and Christ is in you. It's no more this religious efforts in which you try desperately to please God by doing this and not doing that. Realizing that when you realize that there is nothing you can do to please God in the, in, in the, in the weakness of your flesh. You might think your flesh is powerful, but in reality it is very weak. But God desired that we come to all riches of the full assurance of understanding. Understanding of what? Of what is He accomplished? What He has accomplished by the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, you believing it and getting saved eternally and getting sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement, you, you acknowledge constantly the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. It's not a question of brain. Because if it was a question of intelligence, some people, that would not be me, would get a set away because you're very intelligent and other people's law, like me, could say, oh, well, I don't know. This is uh, something that gets revealed by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, when you read and study the words of the Spirit, the words of God, the words of life, in particular, the revelation of the mystery given to for us 
to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom Christ, I hid all the treasures, plural, of wisdom and knowledge. Which means that outside of Christ, there is no real wisdom and knowledge because all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid in him. I understand why. Oh, I start to understand a little bit. It's a big word to say. People don't like the King James Bible. Hey, they don't like the preaching of Paul because Paul, on one side of the coin, gives you such a great, powerful, glorious gospel that saves your soul eternally. But on the other side, it shows you that really in the flesh, you are nothing and you are condemned. Because in Romans 8, one says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But you have to be in Christ Jesus. And there's no religion in the world, no prayers, no fasting, no going to church, no rituals that can put you in Christ Jesus. That's an operation of God. Because you are in Adam. You're born in Adam. In Adam, me you we all are children of wrath and children of disobedience we all dead in trespasses and sins we all enemies ungodly enemies sinners enemies of god in adam in the flesh in the natural man so you can't change that you need the operation of god you, you need to believe how god does it you need to believe the gospel of, of the cross not the gospel of the kingdom we're not going to the kingdom and god is not building the kingdom now even though the kingdom of god will come on earth and jesus christ is king of kings and lords of lords and will reign visibly physically for one thousand years and then introduce eternity on earth but the, the, it's talking about Heavenly places, position in heavenly places in Christ, given to all members, to everyone, members, members in particular of the body of Christ. Salvation is for the body of Christ, you know. Jesus Christ is a savior of all men, especially, especially of those who believe. In other words, he has provided salvation for all men, for all mankind. When I say all men, includes all women, men and women. But not everybody is saved, contrary to what heretical teachings like universalism would like you make you believe, you know. Don't don't listen to that. Go and read for yourself. To the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father on, and of Christ, in whom I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So the, the attention of the Spirit is in Christ. He wants us to have our attention in Christ because in Him I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Why? In this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. This is a word of great beguile. Man. Do you say big element? <laughs> Deception. The liars, the deceivers, they use enticing words. The enemy specializes in this. If the enemy comes to you as the enemy, you straight away search for, you know, seek for defense. No, the enemy is very clever in his evil schemes and the enemy uses people it's not a question that Satan talks to you personally you're not Christ but he has a, a policy of evil they call it a scheme to keep people blind to the glorious gospel of Christ because that's the way you get out from this system 
Um, Galatians 1 4 says that Christ gave himself for us sins they might deliver us from this present evil world. And so Paul says, In whom I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, Christ, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. And this verb you find the operation of Satan because he was beguiled. The first time you, you find this, when she said, The serpent beguiled me. And I did it, you know, when she, she fell. And the enemy is going to use enticing words. Those guys who they go behind pulpit, you know, they call themselves pastors, priests, whatever it is. And they wear special clothes if they belong to certain groups of Christianity, Christendom. Or otherwise, you know, nice jackets and nice ties and they look really million dollar. They, they have techniques, you know. It's like a salesman. When I've been salesman for a period in my life in the financial world many years ago because I'm an old man. And there was a technique, a process to entice the potential customer towards the product that they, you say will solve this problem. In reality, also you were selling your product, you know what I mean? You will use a system to drive the person's attention and decision making to the closure for the sale. And these people buying pulpit, they do the same thing. They promise a lot of stuff that is not real. They use verses of the Bible out of context, verses that belong to other dispensations, and they belong to another people. All treasures of wisdom and knowledge, my dear friend, they are hidden Christ. And Paul says, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing word. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I, am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. This is very important. So at this point he says, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Question, how did you, how did I? receive Christ Jesus the Lord. Because there is a section of, of Christendom that say you have to make Jesus Lord of your life, otherwise you can't be saved. That's really... They created this doctrine out of thin air. He's already Lord. When you receive him, you receive him already. Christ Jesus the Lord. And now did you receive him? Now, for example, Today is the 25th, uh, March 2024. You are listening, maybe today or tomorrow or a month or a year from now, whatever it is. How in the world are you going to receive Christ Jesus the Lord? Somebody going to introduce you and say, this is Christ Jesus. Check your hand and receive him. Or are you going to open your heart and say, Jesus, enter you in my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. It doesn't work like that. That's not scriptural, and so it doesn't work. Sounds interesting, nice, appealing, but you see, by, by, by grace through faith, you believe the gospel of the cross. You believe that Christ died for your sins, how that Christ died for your sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, he was again third day, according to the scriptures. When you do this, God saves you, and the Holy Spirit of God seals you forever, eternally. Me? Yes, you, me, us, believers. All God is required to believe. So it says, how did you receive him? By grace through faith. How are you going to walk? Walk he in him. By grace through faith. Rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith. As you've been taught. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Wow. So you've got to be rooted like a tree, put down the roots and deep. And built up. And that's exactly what happens with a tree. 
But this happens when in Christ, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. See the verb? Established in the faith. That's how you find it. And then we come back here in Romans 16. It says, Now to him that is of power to establish you. Same verb. At the beginning in the book of Romans, He wants you to be established. For a long to see you, that I might impart you onto some spiritual gift, that at the end you might be established. Established. But here, 16, it says, 25, it says, Now to me that it is about to establish you according to my gospel. Why does he call it my gospel? Because it's not the gospel that Jesus was preaching to Israel, nor is 12. They were preaching to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And you and I were no part of that. Never been. If they convince you that you are, they, they really beguiled you. Now to me that is of power to establish according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. So Paul, he doesn't preach himself. He preaches Jesus Christ according to the gospel that Christ gave to him, the gospel of the cross, according to the revelation of the mystery. This was it in God. But what is the revelation of the mystery? Well, Christ knew the hope of glory and the fact that Christ was going to, God in Christ was going to create a new creature, the body of Christ, where Jews and Gentiles alike, by believing and receiving this gospel without works, without covenants, without the law, without Israel, could be saved and sealed and become members in particular of the body of Christ, which is the church, the ground and pillar of the truth, which is his body, where Christ is the head, that we are members of the body, which was kept secret since the world began, but now it's made manifest. That's a mystery. So if we go back to Colossians where I was in chapter 2 and it says as you therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord so walk in him root and built up in him establishing the faith as you've been taught so Paul has been teaching this abounding therein with thanksgiving oh yeah because when you start to think praise the Lord not only not only I'm not going to hell in the lake of fire, but I am now a member of the body of Christ. I can call God my heavenly Father, and I can thank Him constantly that He saved me eternally without me doing anything whatsoever. But it's the operation of God, thanks to what Christ has accomplished, because God has accomplished all that was necessary and required for the salvation of our souls thanks to what Christ accomplished by his cross, by the cross of Christ. For our sins he died and he was buried, he rose again for our justification, he was delivered for our offenses, sins, transgressions and was risen again for our justification. And that's why again Paul says beware. Eh, eh, eh. Wake up. I can't do probably. <laughs> this guy. Beware lest any man spoil you. Through philosophy and deceit. Woo! 2,000 years. At the time of Paul, there was all these Greek philosophers. And they evolved in this philosophy. That's philosophy. Have shaped this kind of so-called Gentile civilizations, which are corrupt to the core, which exclude God, or they create a God to their own image and likeness. Be well, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, 
e Cezia, bigalho. Diz a Celeste Animacho, bigalho, tricio, deceive you with enticing words. And then he says here, beware less and must spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit. It's deception. Deception. Vanity. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ, Tradition of man. God doesn't like this. Jesus rebuked no once a seven both you scribes and Pharisees because they created a religious political system in which they enslaved. The lost sheep of the house of Israel, the Israel of that time. And it's the same now. Those guys, they want to have power to control you. They call themselves with big names, or sometimes they pretend to be very humble. But man, you know, I'm the representative of Christ on earth. I'm your pastor. Go put me over you. No, no, no. In the body of Christ, you might be a believer 20 years and, the, and this brother or this sister just became a believer. Now we are absolutely equal. Okay, the one has been there 20 years and knows the scripture in this case very well, can be considered an elder and he's got to teach and preach according to the revelation of the mystery. Otherwise, he's not an elder. Is another deceiver. But otherwise, he says here, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily in Christ, and ye are complete in him. So the moment, the very moment, you believe and receive the gospel of the cross, the gospel of Christ, without you doing anything, no prayer, no confession of sins, no confessing, uh, no, no the, the, the sinless prayer, no, you trying to entice God to forgive you. He wants, he's already provided forgiveness for you. For you, it's important that you individually believe, receive what Christ has done. That's it. Where do you believe? How do you believe? In your heart. After you believe, you can say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> but first, you have to believe. The thanking Lord is a sign of, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thanksgiving, yeah, of course, but that doesn't save you. What it saves you, you believe in what Christ has done, and actually what saves you is what Christ has done, and you believe it. What Christ has done, he died for your sins, was buried, rose again to justify you. You believe it, he does it, and the Holy Spirit seals you. Ephesians 1, 13, 14. And when you believe this, you have to study the word of truth, rather than divided, following the Apostle Paul, because otherwise you're going to be Deceive, vain deceit with enticing words from politicians and religious people and the so called science. They lie day and night 24 7 because that, that God is the devil and the devil is a liar from the beginning. And ye are complete in him in Christ, which is the head of all principality and power. You know, also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. What is this? That is not physical. Because it says, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision man without hands. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Christ, he died for your sins. By dying for your sins and you believe it, then you are cut off from putting off the body of sins of the flesh. There is a, a circumcision which circumcises your spirit from the body of the sins of the flesh. It's called the circumcision of Christ, which is not one Christ at the, on the eighth day as a little child was circumcised in the temple according to the law. Bear with him in baptism. At this point, people see water, but there is not a drop of water here. 
Were you also your reason with him through the faith of the operation of God who was raised him from the dead? What do you mean there is no water? There is no water. It doesn't, it doesn't say bear with him in water baptism. Bear with him in baptism for the sake of identification. Romans 6. Romans 6. No, you not. No, you know that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ. Not in water. Into Jesus Christ. You see that? We're baptized into his death. That's the second baptism of Christ in death. Christ didn't drown on the, on the cross. Therefore, we are better doing him by baptism. You see, by baptism into death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. So we dead with Christ. Then we are risen with Christ. Then we are ascended with Christ. And then we are seated with Christ in heavenly places in Christ. The like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. That was what? Romans. <laughs> this book is connected in a divine way because it's there the pure words of God the pure words of God you know buried with him in baptism wherein also you are risen with him you see through the faith of the operation of God it's not through something else there is not the pastor that takes you puts you into the water get out of water there is not your hands, the hands, the hands of men don't participate in this. You have no part whatsoever. It's the operation of God who raised him from the dead. He did it when we were not here, were we? No. I'm 75. I wasn't there anyway. <laughs> and in the mind of God, this was before the foundation of the world. It was a mystery in God, the creation of the new creature for heavenly places. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. There's been pollution, sin, and rebellion in heaven and earth. So God, there is a program for the earth to regain the earth through the, the, the restored, born again under the new covenant Israel of the future, and regaining the control of principality, powers, of dominions, and thrones in heavenly places, dispossessing them with the body of Christ, which is the body of Christ. Where Christ is dead, we are members of the body. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, that's how we were, as he quickened together with him. When? As he quickened together with him. Christ got in reason. We got in reason. Quickened back to life. Wow. Have you forgiven you all trespasses? Mind-blowing kind of information. Blotting out what the underwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing to his cross. And having spoiled principality and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them here in it. Land no man therefore judging me to and drink or respect only though we we had a new creature. When you <laughs> Oh, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of holiday or the new moon or the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. The body of Christ is. This is the new reality for you now. If you have believed the gospel of Christ. If you believe John 3.16, you still identify yourself with that condition, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You are not. And you're going to read the, the prophetic uh, scripture thinking that they're talking to you. They're not. James, for example, he, preached, he, he writes to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Are you one of them? No, so James not talking to you. No Peter, no James, no John, no the book of Revelation, no Isaiah. It's for learning whatever is written out four times in the prophetic or the past and the future. You see what happens. You go, look, look here. From Genesis here, Genesis to Acts 8. From Acts 9, so I'll rub just there. from Acts 9, Acts 9, conversion of soul. Start something new. At the end, Acts 28, Paul says, 
Okay, look. Uh, be known therefore unto you that salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and they will hear it. That's it. Something completely new. And when he said these words, the Jews departed, so a great reason among themselves. And Paul dwell, blah, blah, blah. Okay, then you have Romans all the way to Philemon. This is the dispensation of grace. Romans, Philemon, 13 letters. Then when this is closed, because we're gone, you start again with the prophetic Hebrews, written to the Hebrews, James, 1st, 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, Revelation, written to them in the future, written to them in the past. This is written to us now. <laughs> oh, praise God. Back to Colossians 2, and I close. Ah. 31 minutes. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body of Christ is of Christ. Land on my beguile you again. Ooh, there, there is a lot of beguiling going on. Yeah, of course, the enemy would do anything. Of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels. There are entire, there are sanctuaries, San Michel, Castel Sant'Angelo, uh, the Archangel Gabriel and Michael, I mean, I'm not kidding. The world is full of this. They worship angels. The Pentecostal mystics, uh, the, the world of faith, the charismatic, and I was one of them, so I know. They see angels every every corner, you know, through a window, camera. They see angel shape in the reflection of the sun on the, on the glass. I mean, you have no idea. In the clouds, oh, it's an angel. Jesus, I oh, saw Jesus coming on the cloud because there is a cloud that it looks like a man. But that's so ridiculous. But I believe that in the past. I was the side because I was beguiled. Let no man beguile you of your reward. So this is talking to people that are saved. There are going to be rewards of the judgment seat of Christ. In a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding those things which is not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and no holding the head, from which all the body by joints are bound, and nourished minister, and it together increases with the increase of God. Wherefore, if we dead, we Christ from the rudiments of the world. You see, why? You need to study this. <laughs> I'm tired. It's too intense. Grace and peace war. I hope that this anyway gives you kickstart to go and study for yourself. Okay, because you got to study for yourself. Study to show the self approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rather dividing the word of truth. But shun vain, profane babblings because they will increase unto more ungodliness. Grace and